Hey friends, welcome. It's great to be back with you for this special edition of a Spotlight Workshop. If you and I have not met, my name is Emma Lou with Heartfelt Creations. Welcome, welcome. We're going to have a lot of fun over the next hour or two learning how to create these altered home decor projects that are perfect for the Christmas holiday. Now, I don't know about you, but nothing speaks Christmas more than some handmade projects that are decorating, say, your table table or maybe some coffee table ensembles. So join me and we'll have some fun learning these beautiful tips and tricks together. So we'll take a close up look on how we get started and then we're just going to have a lot of fun creating these beautiful one of a kind poinsettias and then we'll follow it up with these beautiful like luminary candles and things that you can use for your play settings. Now when you create with these We'll just hold this a little bit so we can get a close-up look there. There we go. Okay, so when you create this, as we go along, a lot of these are altered projects that you're going to be able to use for the holiday season. Now, if you are a card maker and you love to create those beautiful one-of-a-kind projects, just remember you can use these tips and techniques on your Christmas cards. So I think you're going to have a lot of fun recreating these beautiful one-of-a-kind poinsettias the easy way. So we're going to go ahead and get started creating these poinsettias and then we'll end up with lots of different altered projects that you can use for your Christmas dinners or you can use them as ensembles for your coffee table and mix them in for those uh, holiday decor or give it as a gift to a friend. So are you ready to get started? Now, if you did not get the supplies yet, we have a link below where you can get them individually or as you know when you buy the basic bundle or the deluxe bundle you save even more so make sure that you check those out that you don't miss out now if you bought that basic bundle what you would have purchased is you would have gotten this small festive points at us so take a look we'll take a look at that which has two sizes of this beautiful points that mixed with some berries and one leaf along with the coordinating die and the shaping mold. So that's like a trio that gets you started. And then if you got the deluxe pack, we'll go in back a little bit and show you what you would have gotten with that as we go into what you can do with your deluxe version. So settle down with your favorite cup of coffee or your favorite beverage, and we're just gonna have lots of fun. Now, if you miss any part of this, just remember, after you've watched this, you can go back and watch the recording so that you can rewatch it, pause it as many times as you like. You can redo this and uh, just work at your pace, okay? Um, so we're just going to have a lot of fun just with this jam-packed class learning these beautiful tips and techniques. So are you ready to get started? So to get started, what I did is I stamped my poinsettias with the vermilion, or not the vermilion, the carnation, sorry. Um, that's a beautiful Christmas red. Now, if you were purchasing the add-on accessories, you would have received this ink. In our add-on accessory pack, you got the carnation red, the library green, plus two different stamen packs, and those are great additions to make your poinsettias become complete. Now, the first thing I did was just stamp that image and die cut it out with a coordinating die. If you have never done that, let us know in the comments and we can send you a link to a video that gives you all those beautiful details. So the very first thing you're going to want to do is just go ahead and color your poinsettias. Now I color my poinsettias very quickly and easily by just going in with a triangular sponge dauber, which is also something you would have gotten in the add-on accessory pack. And I'll do kind of a dark shading around those edges and then the center of the petals are a little bit lighter. Now this is something that you're going to be able to do and repeat with any color combination that's your favorite. In fact, many of our design team members have used so many beautiful, luxurious color combinations for this specific poinsettia. Now you might be asking yourself, what makes this poinsettia different than any other one? This one has very realistic, live, wide petals. They're not live, but they look realistic and live, okay? With the width of these, it allows you to add a lot of glitz, glam, and glitter into these poinsettias if you are that type of crafter. 
Today we're going to focus more on the dimension and the stamens we're going to add into the center and maybe at the end if we have some time we might just add in some frosting powder and really add some frosting highlights to those. That's just a bonus that we might get to at the end um, if you want to see that. Let us know in the comments. So we're going to go ahead and after you've colored that you have just a beautiful shaded technique. Now if you are new to coloring just give yourself some grace. I know that when you first color, it can feel a little bit awkward, especially if it's a little bit of a different way or style of coloring. Um, and a great way to do that is just test it on, out on the back. I always do um, kind of a light, light feathery touch in a circular motion to start out with to just get acquainted with how much ink is on my sponge dauber. And then you can always go back and you can make that darker by just adding much more pressure. Um, so you can always go from light to dark um, as much as you like. So you can kind of see how you can test that out on the back if you like. Now, once you have stamped and colored and die cut those images, you're going to go ahead and run them through your shaping mold. The shaping mold is really the hero of this collection. It shapes it for you so you don't have to spend all that time hand shaping those poinsettias. It saves you so much time and your hand strength is saved for something later, right? So we're gonna go ahead and put this into our shaping mold. Um, for this one, I put them stamped side down. You can also have it stamped side up. It's totally up to you. If you have it stamped side up, those petals will be faced up this way. So just, you know, choose whichever way you want to have those go. Um, so we'll go ahead, have both of those stamped side down, and if you have the leaf, the coordinating leaf, you can go ahead and just put that in there as well. The leaves are just a really, really pretty um, green coloring. I'll show you how to color those two in just a little bit um, so we don't get the cart uh, ahead of the horse, but. Um, once you have those in your shaping mold, you're going to go back and just do a light mist. Now you don't want to give it a shower. If you give it a shower, your petals tend to break easier and you'll know when that happens. So just do a light mist and if you've never done it before, um, just give yourself some grace and you'll figure out pretty quickly how much moisture to put on there. Um, I did stamp these flowers on our deluxe flower shaping paper. Um, if you don't have that, you can always add that as an extra accessory item. Um, or if you have a cardstock at home you like to use, go ahead and use that. What I love about our white cardstock, it is it is perfectly formatted for those flowers so that it's very durable and sturdy. And once it dries, it is really stiff and the petals do not break as easily as some of the paper that you might have been using. So put this through our machine, very easy. Um, this mold, shaping mold goes through any machine that has a three quarter inch or thicker opening. Um, so as long as you have a machine with that, you're good to go with your. So we'll take a close up look on the beautiful way it shaped those poinsettias and that leaf. It really just adds even a texture in there that would be really difficult um, to get with your hands without a lot of effort and a lot of time. So just in a matter of minutes, you have those flowers all shaped, all colored, and you're ready to create them, which makes Christmas card making and creating those altered projects so quick, so simple, and so easy. Now to color these leaves, I have different sprays. Now this is in the um, deluxe kit. If you bought the big package um, that has the holly berry spray in it, um, that is additional. That one has these beautiful sprays that are an absolute must have to go with the poinsettia to really layer it together. Um, and you have the coordinating die that cuts those out. But I wanted to just show you a quick um, coloring technique with that. I use the library green. This is what I call a really strong power color. So if you stamp your leaves in library green and you color it, you just want to make sure you don't blot out the stamped image. So what you're going to do is just go ahead and test out how much color you have on the back. And then you can go in the front and I'll start kind of in the center and I'll just do these light kind of I don't know if you call it striping towards the outside edges okay so you'll do that on each one of those petal leaves and so it's a pretty quick and easy technique now if you want to blend in a couple colors of green if you have another color of green you want to use just use a fast drying ink um, and you have a very beautiful leaf all colored in no time so you can add as much or as little color on there as you prefer um, based on 
what you like. So to get started putting this together, that's going to be our next step, which is the fun and happy process of reaping the rewards of the hard work of stamping, die cutting, and coloring, which actually it's not hard work, really. <laughs> it is just one of those things that comes together so beautifully and easily, whether you are a beginning crafter or an advanced crafter, and that's what we love about this process. So once you have that all colored, you're gonna go back and you're going to add a hole in the center. Now, I do add a pretty large hole in the middle because I am going to put some really chunky, chunky monkeys in there. And that's not monkeys, but they're really, um, I'm pairing three different stamen combinations. If you bought the accessory add-on pack, you would have gotten two different packs of stamens so you can mix and match exactly how I did. And you might even see some other colors in there that you want to mix and match with. So just make sure that you take advantage of the bundle packs that we have available. You save quite a bit of money on those. So uh, take a look at that. And as a special thank you for watching today, you get a free die with a $50 purchase. All you have to do is enter coupon code 11-13202, and that expires on November 13th. Again, that coupon code is 11-13202 and expires on November 13th. So just make sure that you take advantage of that when you are making your purchase as well. Okay, so our next step is going to be adding and layering these flowers together. Now you get to choose how many layers you want to put together. Today I am using two, um, but you can really mix and match these sizes. Now I am using all threaded stamens. I'm using some of my pearl stamens, and then I'm using two colors of the rock candy stamens, which is the red and the gold. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to use two of each color a per flower, so I'm going to bring those out. I'm going to put two on there, two on this side. We've got the gold. Um, pairing together different textures and colors really makes that center pop. Now, I know some of you might also have questions on how do you really add these threaded stamens very quickly and easily into a poinsettia center. Now, whether you got the basic set or our advanced set, you have um, what you need to create this basic poinsettia and then you can use it for your cards or you can use it for altered projects and home decor projects for Christmas. Now, here's the little trick with these um, stamens is you want to have a, like a florist wire um, that is pretty thin. If you don't have one of those, typically I pick mine up at Hobby Lobby, Michaels. Um, some people are like, yes, but Emily, what gauge do you use? I don't even know what gauge this is. It's just pretty thin. Um, you want it to be thick enough that you can really nicely grip it. Uh, but what you're going to do is put all those stamens together in a little, nice little stack. So you have a total of six, or if you want more, you can always add more. Just keep in mind, the more you um, put in, the like the clumpier it's going to be in the center. So you want to have a larger hole. But this poinsettia is really nice and thick in the center, so you can easily make a larger hole if you need to. So you have that wire coming down the center. We wrapped it around. And then that creates kind of a needle and thread effect so you can fold that up and you have that nice chunk of stamens for the center. And what you're going to do next is just go ahead and layer those and pull those through the center of the flower. You can feel pretty quickly if you um, made your holes big enough or not because if it kind of sticks and it doesn't want to go through because your stamens are pretty bulky, you can always go back and you can poke a larger hole in the center if you need to. So go ahead and bring that through again. Now before this goes up, I wanted to show you a, a trick, especially if you like to have uh, poinsettias that are pretty dimensional. And just another tip, you can always color the back if you want to, especially if you're going to pull the petals up. But I'm going to put some glue that goes up kind of each petal. So that center, I'm using hot glue so it bonds quickly. Um, so that those, uh, and then we'll just offset those petals. But if you have some glue that kind of goes up those petals, it helps those petals stand up a little bit more. So just offset those petals, just be patient with it as you kind of rotate it around and as the glue is grabbing those petals. And just like that, you have that beautiful one-of-a-kind poinsettia that is just perfect for Christmas. So I'll just hold that for a second and we'll get a really nice close-up of that. Isn't that just perfect? Just love, love how that turns out. 
Now, once you're finished making your first one, I'm going to do this one more time so you can see this again, kind of just a repeat. Pete, but you can go ahead and pull this wire from the back. I'm going to lay this one aside that we just did. And you can do the same as again. So once again, I did three different colors, two of each color, and just line them up. And then you can go ahead and take that stamen and layer that wire over the top. Pull this up and you've got a really nice flower center. Isn't that just perfect? So tell me what you love about this technique and have you created flowers before? Or maybe you're a seasoned crafter and you have had this point set up for a while, you've been using it, and this just gives you some aha moments. Let us know when you're having those aha moments during the class. It's so much fun to see comments and your interaction is what keeps this class so much fun and we love to hear your feedback. Let us know where you're watching from, introduce yourselves, and let's just have a lot of fun. Um, if you haven't, or if you're not really familiar with Heartfelt Creations, we are based in Indiana and we have just the most amazing team that loves to bring you these beautiful crafted projects. Every single month we have new products we launch, which is really fun because you never know what's coming next, right? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just add our glue in there. Um, so we'll, I didn't pull it up all the way. Um, but we'll just go ahead and make sure we have a nice clump of glue. You can always kind of hold it upside down too if you're afraid that the glue will um, go through on your fingers. If I yell, you know that that's what happened as I burned myself. Hopefully that's not what will happen today. But hey, it has happened. I had some hot glue casualties. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and... Pull those petals up and you have that beautiful poinsettia. So just have fun practicing it. I would highly recommend um, making a bunch of these just all at one time. It really saves time. Most of the projects that I'm doing today take one or two of these beautiful poinsettias. Um, if you wanted to do more or less, you can. Um, it's totally up to you. And if you have both our large and small poinsettia, you can always cluster different sizes and types together as well. Um, so this is just a basic idea of what you can do. And then if you're making cards and you just bought the basic set, use that small little leaf, pair it in, create those little clusters, and have some fun layering those to your cards. You can use your um, beautiful fancy dies. Now, we are using a die today that is one of my favorites. You would have gotten it with the big set that we bundled together, which has your best value, your best savings. So if you didn't get that one, I would highly remember getting that because you not only get these small festive poinsettia, you get that die in the shaping mold that I just got finished using, but you get the Regal Lattice Gateway. This die, you will be absolutely amazed at all the different ways we're going to be uh, creating with it today from having like this beautiful napkin wrapped to this place card where you can put your like silverware in um, for your table settings during the holidays. This is also something I think would be perfect on a, just on a card. You could add your sentiment here. So keep that in mind as we're going through that you can translate any of these items to a card. Here's another one. This one you could use um, as a setting to set a candle on top of. It's like a doily. So this is a different circle die. Um, and this one is really pretty as well, just on a card with a sentiment in the center or you can use it as a tabletop setting. Um, this piece we're also going to be creating, which is using the Regal Lattice Gateway Die. And this one you can use for to write the names on of your guests that are, are at the table, so make any fancy little name cards. Um, or you could also use this as a gift tag for gifts, which I think would be really pretty, or just layer this on a small A2 size card add a sentiment in the center, so lots of ideas with that. And then last but not least, you have this beautiful kind of luminary uh, candle holder that is, makes a really nice setting on your coffee table, or just use one side to use it on a card. So lots of many, many different options. So where to begin? I think what we're gonna do first is we're going to show you how to cut out this Regal Lattice Gateway Die. I'm gonna show you some die cutting techniques that I think will be very, very helpful for you, especially if you struggle with very intricate dies. This one has a spot where the machine hits um, that your machine rollers, depending on the strength of them, really you wanna know some tips and techniques with that. It's 
a intricate die paired with a machine and rollers that have more strength on the ends than the middle really mean that you want to know those tips and techniques of how to cut out intricate dies very, very nicely and easily without the pain point and frustration. I'm sure we've all had that one time or another. Depending on what machine you have, you might not have any issues, but I do want to make sure that if you run into any issues that you are equipped. So in that bundle, you can click on it to see everything that's in it, but you also get the Lux cardstock. The Lux cardstock is a really beautiful Lux gold that is perfect for your holiday cards. Plus, just really creating some very elegant projects. This is some of the highest quality gold cardstock you will find. If you haven't used it yet, you're missing out. We have crafters that just swear by it. They love it for all of their crafting. So when you receive that lattice die, there are multiple pieces in it. I believe there's three. Yes, there's three pieces. So the first piece that we're going to be cutting out is I'm going to show you how to just cut out like the entire piece to create. We're gonna do the luminary candle first. And for that one, um, you're going to wanna cut out four pieces of this die from gold cardstock, and you're going to want to cut out four pieces from white cardstock. And we'll tell you in just a little bit why you wanna do that. So when you cut this out, take your Lux Gold cardstock and along with the very center die and just position that in the middle and we're gonna go ahead and tape these down. I might need to grab another piece of tape so that I have everything secured. Um, where did I put my tape? Here we go. Um, so here we go. Now, when you run this through your machine, I'm using a narrow sh machine on purpose today so that you get to see some of the tricks that I do, especially if I don't have a wide machine. And just so you know, some of your wider machines do not have as much strength in the middle because the rollers, um, again, they have the most strength on the outside edges and your intricate dies kind of get lost in the middle. Um, so it's something to just keep in, in mind. Now, when you run this through, I'm going to run this through once just like this. That's all I'm doing. Putting my plate on top, I'm using the Vagabond. In fact, my top plate is a little bit warped, um, so I'm not using any new plates. If your plates are warped, just run them through the opposite direction so that that makes that you, oops, my glue fell down. Okay, here we go. We'll run that through, so I'll run it through once. Once it's all the way through, we'll go back through it again. Oops, I wanna make sure I have it all the way through it. Okay, here we go. Now, you'll see that, you know, that gave it pressure all over, but there's typically one area that it really doesn't hit very much. And this is your area that it doesn't. So this is what's happening. This is more of a peaked area. So when your roller goes through, it's just hitting, you know, it's going one, two, three. And then all of a sudden, it just hits this bottom and it's done. So it doesn't spend a lot of time right on this area. So this is where your problem area is going to be if you have one. So here's what I want to help you out. What you're going to do is you're going to lay this on an angle. Now, you'll see that with this one, you can't do much of an angle because you um, have a narrow machine. So you just do it at the angle that you can. That makes that it still runs through. I took the outside edge off so that we can do that. If you have a wider machine, you can always do it like this. So that when those plates, those blades, rollers are going through, it's rolling, 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 and it's adding a lot of pressure. So that's kind of the, what do you call it, the logistics behind some of that stuff. Now I am going to go ahead, and I'm just going to, sorry, I'm using another Lux piece of cardstock on top of here. I don't like to do that, just because I feel like I'm wasting it. But just take a scrap piece of paper and put it right over this area on the top, just this area. Don't put it over the entire die. What you're doing at that point is you are just making the same pressure over the entire die again and you want that machine to give more pressure on this area um, because it's still rolling 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 and then boom it's off and it doesn't give much pressure in this area so you want to go ahead and just put a little shim on top you don't have to use gold cards that you can just use your scrap paper and then we'll run that through and that will just cut that out for us um, so that's a little tip, just make sure that it's angled 
that makes that the machine is hitting that place just a little bit more. And hey, if you have a magnetic shim or you might have a die cutting machine where you use different tricks. Now, if you have this exact machine, if it's older, if it's newer, you might see, okay, it just cut it out the first pass. You might have newer plates, so there's lots of variations, but I just wanted to show you some a couple little tips with that. So that's all cut out. You can just pop it out of your die um, and pop those extra pieces out, and you're good to go. So you want to make sure that you have four of those pieces cut out with gold and four of them cut out with white. And this is why. We'll put the white in the background, and that gives a very luxurious, like, um, kind of edging. Do you see how that's just so pretty? So you can go ahead and cut those all out. Once those are done, just grab your glue. I'm using the dry clear glue. It gives me a little bit more time to, for it to dry and for me to reposition my stuff if I need to. So I'll do that around the center and then I'll also go around the edges. And this glue is amazing for intricate dies with a fine metal tip. Just makes that you can get that glue exactly where you're wanting it to go and you don't spend a lot of time trying to use adhesives that have too much glue that comes out too quickly. So we'll go ahead and just offset this. And then this is what we're going to use for that luminary candle. So we'll just kind of offset it. You can do it as much or as little as you like. And you can also do reverse. You could do white with the gold in the backer. So you could kind of test it out, see what you like. Um, I'm going to move this plate away just a little bit. I'm going to bring in my score pal. And we're going to add some score lines so that we can um, add a little extra like twist at the corners. So with this, we're going to go ahead and just use your score pal and it doesn't have to be exact, but you will want to, I'll show you on this one, you'll want to create a score line pretty much right in the center of that gold. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, just kind of use the eyeballing technique. I really wasn't super specific with that. Um, I just wanted to have a score line in there for myself so I don't have to just um, fold it by hand. It gives me that extra crease ran off just a little bit there. Okay, so I have a couple more to do here. So I'll just do this to each one. Is this one? No, this one's not done. So you'll have four so that you have all four sides done. So just line those up in your score pal. Oops, let me move this over just a little bit. I'm using the eyeballing technique. If you wanted to measure it more, you can. But literally, you're just trying to make a line pretty much down the center to help start giving you that crease that you wanted to bend very gently when you're gluing this together. Okay, so we have one more. So I'll go ahead and do this. Now again, just remember when you buy the big package, you save more and you have this die in it, um, which is really, really cool. I can't remember if the circle die that I'm using later is in that pack as well. Um, you can definitely check that. Okay, before we fold those edges, we also cut out a this piece, which is just one die that's in that set that you can use as a backer so that it's vellum covering it. So that kind of flickers and gives a subtle glow when you have a candle in there. So go ahead and just add the vellum. I did it to three of them. We'll go ahead and add that vellum to the background and that will just glue down to that edge and give that some covering for that. Isn't that just so pretty? Just love, love how that looks. So we'll just go ahead, add some glue, and you have this beautiful piece just added to the back. Now I'm gonna lay this aside to dry and add this one last so that I'm not smudging that. Okay, so before you glue this together, just bring these sides up. And as you go through, you'll be able to glue those a little bit better or fold it a little bit better. Sorry, I'm mixing my word glue. And we're just going to go ahead and just match these up. Now, when you glue this together, 
you're going to clip it with some little alligator clips. I am using my dries clear glue. And we're going to give this some time to dry. Um, so we're gonna, that's why we're doing this one first. So we can lay it aside to dry for a little bit before we add on our flowers and the leaves and all that fun stuff. So just go ahead and match it up here. And once you have that matched up, go ahead and grab a couple little alligator clips to hold that in place until that dries. The dries clear glue does dry pretty quickly um, and it is also pretty forgiving. Um, so you don't have to wait too long for that to dry. So this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull these edges up as well. Isn't this just so pretty? I can't wait for you to experience this at home. And just remember, um, work at your own pace. You can go back and re-watch the recording. Um, some of the top tips from crafters have been when they are watching my classes, they like to watch it the first time through once, and then they go back, they pause it, and do it with me in the video. So that is one of my top, top tips. Now just remember, um, if you love this class and this workshop, we offer monthly classes um, that you can um, get, you can purchase for $30, or if you are one of our insider members, you can become an insider member for $12.99 a month. You save an extra 20% on all your purchases, and you get free shipping on every order, plus you get all of our online classes completely free, and you can watch previously recorded classes as well, and those, um, we have over 40 of them. So it's like a classroom vault um, that's valued at over $1,200. And that is for $12.99 a month, or you can sign up for the entire year and you get three months free. So that is an amazing option. If you're not an insider member, you are missing out if you love all things Heartfelt Creations. So I'm gonna go ahead, add this last one. You could even do like a three one. Uh, just, just do three if you wanted to. Um, it's just super pretty all the different ways. It kind of depends on what kind of size candle you want on the inside. But I like to put in one of those battery operated candles. Um, so it just adds that soft glow. And you could do, um, you know, different sizes and styles if you wanted to. You could just use just the center um, and cut these edges down a little bit if you wanted to. Okay, so I glued both of these sides. So we're gonna do both sides at one time. Oops. That's the beauty of the dries clear glue is it does give you time. Do I have enough clips? Oh, I think I might be one short, but we're going to make it work. Okay, so we're going to bring these in. Do this on both sides. And then we'll just pull this up. I hope you can see this. Okay, there we go. And then we're ready for that last one. Isn't that just so pretty? Okay, let's see if this first one is dry enough that we can pop off, I think it is, that we can pop off one of the alligator clips. So that's your basics. Isn't that exciting? We have project number one all done, except for the flowers and the leaves. So that is how it looks with the alligator clips. I'm gonna set this one aside. We're gonna work on another small project to give this one a little bit of time to dry, and then we'll come back to this one. Tell us what you love about this one. I just love how simple it is. Yet it looks like you spent so much time creating it, but it's super easy. And just remember, you could have just used just a plain die, layered a couple flowers on it, added a sentiment, and it would be a very quick and easy Christmas card. The next one we're going to create is our napkin holder. How would you feel if you would show up at a dinner party and you have this beautiful napkin ring? Now this is a very, very simple, super, super beautiful and elegant. So with this one, all you're gonna do is you are going to do the exact same step that we did with the first one, where you go ahead and glue the gold and the white together, and then you're gonna roll this. Now, <laughs> it's up to you how you wanna roll this, but you wanna be kinda like a little bit gentle as you start to bring this around. And if you, you it doesn't matter what thickness, I mean, obviously you want it to reach, like this is too thick, um, but if you start to kinda wrap it around something that's round, just look around your craft desk, See, what do I have that's round? This one's a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna wrap that around and I'm gonna grab this side and we are going to link this together down in here. Isn't that cool? And that will make a round like napkin holder. Now you can adjust how um, open you want this if you want it a little bit more closed. So I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to add some hot glue like right in this section so it bonds very quickly. 
So we're going to go ahead and do that. And it's going to naturally want to just pull loose. So we're going to hold it a little bit and maybe even bring in some alligator clips if I can borrow some from the previous project, which I think I should be able to. So we'll just hold that for a little bit. Um, and let's see if we can grab some of these little clips and just clip these edges. There we go. And it's kind of like a little wet burrito. It just doesn't have the meat and cheese. <laughs> Who thought we'd make a wet burrito <laughs> reference in the class, right? Hey, all sorts of things we do in crafting remind us of something with food, right? Okay, so this is your basics, right? Now, you can go ahead then. This is so easy to do, right? Who would have thought? This die is so versatile and adds so much uh, elegance to home decor projects, to your cards, and it has been one of our crafters' top favorites. So with this, you can just add a really pretty poinsettia. Um, if you don't want to do one, two, it's totally up to you. But I took, this is where we have in the um, more of our deluxe set, you would stamp the holly berry spray. Um, and I used this one two times. I stamped it once with the library green. And then I stamped it once. This is totally optional. I stamped this once on gold Lux card set with Versamark and gold embossing powder. So you'll see that stamped image on there that's just really elegant. What you'll want to do is you can shape them if you want to. Um, a lot of these are a little bit covered with the flower, so you don't see the shaping as much with this specific one. Um, so it's up to you how much you want to do that. But I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of my driest clear glue, like right down in here, and offset this. Actually, you know what? I did it reverse. Let's do the green on the back, like the, the original sample. Sometimes I get ahead of myself, and I get so excited, and I do it a little bit differently. But hey... Well, that brings up another, another thing. When you are watching me, you can do it exactly how I do it, or you can use it as inspiration and use your own creative magic with it. So we're going to go ahead and add another dot of glue on the back and just glue that right uh, pretty much in, in here. And then I'll take my poinsettia, and you can clip off that end. Oops, this is sliding. It's like I don't want to live here. Could I, could I go to a different spot? So you can go ahead and clip those little stamen ends off and then you can just use your hot glue and you can just add that right to the top. And this is done. Like you can just let it lay it aside to dry and that is completely done. You can wrap some of your favorite beautiful napkins in there. I'm guessing your guests won't even want to touch it because it's so pretty. Um, and it's something that you could send home with them or you could if you don't want to send it home with them, you could always put it, store it, and use it for next year as well. Or you could always take this off and use it on a card if, like, the um, napkin part kind of gets a little bit soiled. So lots of variations. Okay, I think this one is ready for us to add our flowers. Let's see. I'm going to take all the alligator clips off, and let's see where we can position this so you can see it the best while I am adding it. Can you see this? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it down to add my flowers, and then once I have it added, I'm going to go back and hold it up as I can to prevent the glue from sliding. Does that sound like a plan? So again, just remember as you are um, watching, um, we've added the links um, to a page that gives you all the different bouquets, or not the bouquets, I'm making a bouquet of flowers, all the different bundles um, where you can get the the basic bundle, which saves you some money where you get that small um, poinsettia stamp, die, and shaping mold. But what most of our crafters do is they go for the whole kit and caboodle where you get all the stamps and dies, plus that gold luxe cardstock, and you save so much with that. Um, so you, there you've got one flower. Um, you can kind of pick and choose. Actually, I'm just going to move it over just a little bit um, so that we have... And then I'm going to go back, and we're going to have this large green spray. I'm going to pull it apart. This is the largest one in that set. We're going to add that one more down here at the base. So don't be afraid to maneuver them around. Have some fun with it. Every cluster I make is a little bit different than the last one. Just go ahead and pull those apart as needed. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and add this one kind of more to the top to kind of flank that upwards. And if you want, I just decorated one side. You could decorate it multiple sides, especially if you have it 
on a coffee table where people are going to be viewing it from multiple sides, or maybe you want it just more plain so you can see the lighted luminary aspect of it a little bit better. Then you have the leaf going up. Once that's done, you can go back, add your poinsettias, and add a couple single leaves. Um, so just a, lots of variations on how you can gather and put these together. So you can clip the leaves, you can do some fun things with these. So the leaves you can cut from the swirls, you can just snip those apart. Or if you have the small poinsettia set, which is not included in any of the bundles, uh, you could also use the single leaves in there. Um, totally up to you. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and add one leaf in this section. So you kind of see that. And then we'll go back and add a couple leaves up in here. So, so pretty when those start coming together. It's so exciting. Okay. So I'll go ahead and add this one. And I think I'm going to see how that looks. And then I'm going to grab another one off of this stem and add it right in this section. There's a lot of different swirls and leaves. Um, that just make this set so perfect and coming together. I just love, love how those just come together so beautifully. There's these little leaf sprays too that are perfect little filler accents um, that you can utilize as well. I'm just going to push this one a little bit in the back up there. Oops. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and add maybe one more down in this section behind that leaf. And that will create a beautiful cluster. Um, this is the exact same thing you could use on a card. If you're just laying it on a card, add your sentiment like your Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, right in there and you get that beautiful, beautiful cluster. Now I'm holding this sideways um, just so that we can get a great close up for you. Um, but this would be up and down, oops. Um, and this is how that was set. Isn't that so pretty? Just love, love how that turns out. Now, a couple more projects to put together. Let's go for our little note card holder. The note card holder is so stinking cute. Yeah, it's so simple. You just take that main die that we used and cut it out. You can trim off as much as you want from the top so you're removing the arch. And then you'll go ahead and you'll just snip a little square piece uh, maybe if I have a ruler, let's see if I have a ruler before I promise measurements. Yes, I do. Um, this square is cut to two and one, two, three, four, five eighth by two and five eighth. And then I think the gold is at, it's just a little bit larger than that to border this. So you can go ahead, stamp a sentiment, write somebody's name, um, do what you like with that. And you can create this as a little place card holder at your dinner table, or you can add it to a card front. Um, this would be beautiful under just those beautiful, uh, simple A2 size cards that you still want to have the elegant um, touch to it. So go ahead. And this one was also done with a double layer of white and gold. And we'll just layer this on top. And you have that beautiful piece that is just ready to accent. So all you have to do at this point is you can do one, two, three flowers, um, however many you want. This one, I mixed a little bit of the gold stamens plus the, the um, green instead of the red. So have some fun. There's green rock candy stamens in your packets with the add-on accessory bundle. Um, so lots of variations on what you can create with it. So you'll put one poinsettia in the corner and then you can go back and you can add use another one of those stamped gold pieces and you will add that to the top and then add it, finish it off with a couple just very simple leafy sprays. So I have that gold one up there. And then you can use a couple of these sprays. If you want to pull it apart, you can. I think I'm going to do that for this one. And then just tuck in just a couple little sprigs of this. Isn't that just so, so pretty? Okay. So we're moving right along. I, what I find with this is it looks a little bit complicated when you first see it, but when you break it down, it's like, oh my gosh, this is so, so simple and easy um, to do like home decor projects to use it for your cards or just to use it as fun decor in your home for the holiday season. I think this is 
It's nothing that really welcomes the Christmas season. Then there's some beautiful handmade projects that you've had fun creating. If you wanted to add more in there, I think I'm just going to add just a little bit more um, in this section. That's the beauty. You can pull apart leaves. You can really add in less or more if you wanted to. Um, so many different ways. There we go. Perfecto. Just love how that turns out. So that's your place card holder, or you can just stamp a sentiment in there. Uh, pop it on a card, use it for a gift tag, lots of different ways that you can utilize th this one for Christmas. Um, and then, if you wanted to do more of a, kind of like this doily base that you want to set, like, say a small candle on top, or you want to um, use it for something else. Maybe you have another decorative piece that you want to just put like a small angel or a figurine on top. You could totally do that. Or think about using this as um, an ornament. You could fold it in half and put it on a Christmas tree. Or you could just use it like this as an ornament on your tree too. So lots of variations. Pop a sentiment on it and it's perfect for a card. I know maybe I'm going a little bit too fast on all of those ideas, but you can um, always rewind, rewatch, and have fun with those. So for this one, we cut out two of those large holly sprays. We cut out one of them, the smaller one, stamped with the Versamark and the gold embossing powder. And then we have one of the, the flowers. And I'm just going to clip off the ends to prep that. For this one, super simple to put it together. You're going to go ahead and cut out one piece with the Galux Gold cardstock. You're going to uh, cut out the second size and layer it on top of a circle die piece. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue that together. And that will just go right on top. And then if you wanted to, you can 3D this piece, which I think it looks really pretty 3D. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull off these backers of foam. So stick around to the end. I have a lot of samples of how these poinsettias were just used on other cardstock uh, or cards so it's just kind of a bonus tip of ideas to get your creativity just going 100 miles an hour in case you love creating those Christmas cards with poinsettias there's many different colors like aquas there's I don't know if I have a silver one in there but I can't wait to show you that too but hey for the clustering of these what you're going to do is go ahead and you will take one of these green ones and you will layer it at the base like this. You can kind of adjust it like that. And then you're going to go back and you're going to layer a gold one on top. Isn't that just so pretty? So pretty. So you have kind of a swirl going this way and a swirl going this way. Now for the other side, you're going to do the gold first, and then we're going to do the green on top. So it's just reversed. So you can go ahead and just add this on the top. Oops, I want to just circle this a little bit more. There we go. And then I'm going to just use a piece of this green one. So I just pretty much cut it in half and used one of those leaves, and we'll bring this in, and we're ready to add the flower on top. So just just have fun with it. Um, you can always go back and pull off another, you know, you pull this cluster off. You could have this going in the side if you wanted to. I think I'm just going to pull this off again. Utilize this piece a little bit, so don't be afraid to, um, <laughs> to add those leaves in, pull them apart, manipulate them so you can create the cluster that you want. So this is how that looks. Now you could do one or two sizes on this of the poinsettia, totally up to you. Um, on the original sample, we just did one, um, but it's up to you. Just have some fun, really, like, just experimenting and playing with this and having some fun just adding those layers with leaves, with the golds and the greens, and adding that poinsettia on top. If you wanted to add another one in, you could totally do that. Totally up to you. Speaking of another one, this one I have an example of how it looks with prills. If you like something that doesn't have as much dimension, you want to add it to a card for mailing, and then you can have these points set as a little flatter, um, which is totally an option as well, since I get a lot of questions on how do I mail this. This would make a really nice um, flat card if you just add pearls in the center and just make that the points that don't come up as far. Um, obviously, they're doing that more today since we're doing more of an altered projects. And just remember when you're shopping with us, on our website for those products that you missed, um, take advantage of the free die with a $50 purchase. 
Um, you can use coupon code 1113202 and that expires on November 13th. So last but not least, we have one more piece and this is the piece where you can tuck in your like cutlery um, or if you wanted to put like a Christmas message in there, maybe you wanted to put in a note um, that's special for each guest that's coming to your dinner party. Lots of options for this. You could always just add a sentiment, add this to a card. For this one, you are going to want to cut a notch out. And all you're doing is you're just cutting out the first notch of this decorative opening in here. Um, so it's a pretty easy clip when you're doing that. So um, don't stress out about it. Um, just do one row of those diamonds that are clipped off the top. So um, that's what you get started with. So again, for this one, do that for the white and the gold both. And then you can go ahead and just glue both of these together and offset those again. The offsetting is such a delicate, elegant touch. And you can do this with many of the different decorative dies that you might already have. And then if you want to make this into more of a pocket style versus just you know, gluing this shut, since you want to put cutlery or a message in, um, just go ahead and add just a little bit of glue around the inner edge of this wide border, and that will attach that for you. Um, and I'm just going to lay this down so I can see exactly where to place that on the back here. There we go. And that creates your pocket um, so that you can slide those items in there. I don't think I put much glue right up in this section. Um, so we'll just press that down. Okay, so once you're finished with that, um, you can go back and layer your flowers. This one, we did two flowers, lots of leaves, pairing with the gold and the green combos. And again, if you're like, wait a minute, how did you do the flowers? If you missed the first part, we did the flowers at the very beginning, which is something you can do with your basic bundle. Um, and then if you got the big bundle, you can create these other projects with that. Um, the accessory bundle is an add-on if you don't have the inks, the sponge showers, and the stamen centers. So with this one, so pretty. So you'll want to have two of the flowers, double layer, and then you'll want to have two of the small um, swirls in the Hollyberry spray set. So you're using two of this stamped with Versamark and gold embossing powder. And then you're also going to go ahead and use one of the large and one of the small one in the green. So to go ahead and glue this down, I'm go ahead, going to glue one of these gold ones down first for the top. So I'll do that pretty much right in this section. Hold that up so you can see it. And then let's see, we use this swirl for the bottom. So it's basically the same size swirl that just comes right down, kind of goes a little bit cat a corner and brings that in there. And here's a little tip too. Since you are gluing this and this is a pocket, I would stick in a scrap piece of paper so that you don't accidentally glue this section closed, especially if you wanna you know, add a larger piece of paper or something in there. So um, that is always something to kind of watch out for. And then we're gonna go ahead and just use the top of this swirl and glue that in. And we're gonna do that on top of this piece right in here. So we'll do that oh, pretty much just like this. And then I'll go back and grab my other swirl. I was like, wait, where did you go? Um, and I have a leftover piece of this one. This one we're not using as much of the swirl. We're just pulling that off. And then we're grabbing a leftover gold leaf from our previous one. And we're just gonna go ahead and kind of cluster a grouping of three gold leaves. Oops down here so oops i have all sorts of glue stringies quick tip on glue stringies if you have a heat embossing tool you can always just go and um, melt those extra strings with your heat embossing tool that makes those little guys disappear which is really really nice okay so we're going to go ahead and add this third leaf just right on top there and then for this one, again, we just use two flowers. If you wanted to do three, if you are one of my flower making queens and you love to add lots of flowers, you get to choose how many flowers you want to add in the center so, or in the arrangement. So that's totally up to you. Or if you wanted to use, we have some rose hip stamens, which are really large stamens that would also be nice just laying in the background of these um, bouquets as well. Um, so... Just go ahead and 
add those and you are all done with that. Isn't that so pretty? I just love, love how that turns out. So you have some of those stamens kind of went sideways when I um, pushed those down, but um, that just really adds that extra elegance that you can add to your Christmas cards. Now, we are getting close to the end of our projects. We've got lots of samples to show you yet, and I wanted to show you a bonus glittering technique. You'll see that none of these have been glittered, but if you're like me, I never feel like a flower is finished until you glitter it. Now, you can glitter it before or after. You can glitter it at this point when it's just a single flower, or you can glitter it after you put it onto your project. It really doesn't matter. Most times I will wait until after I put it on my project uh, so that I don't, you know, mess around with it with my fingers when I am, uh, after I've added the glitter, so I don't get that glitter all over the place. So we're going to do a couple different things. Now this is, just remember, this is a bonus tip. Um, I did not add these items to any of the packs, so if you don't have them yet, um, you can easily pick them up. But I'm going to do kind of a two different techniques here. The first one, we're just going to be adding a crystal clear glitter, and we're going to add just a bunch of dries clear to our sponge. What this is going to do is this is going to just give us some glittery points out of tips. Um, the glue will dry clear, and you'll have just a very nice glittery effect, um, which this is a super chunky glitter. It's hard to see it in the, the glare of the lights here, um, but it just adds kind of that encrusted snowflake look. Hopefully you can see that. It's so pretty in person. Um, now another step that you can do is, let me just check something here. Um, do I have, yes, here, here we go. This is the frosting powder. If you love kind of a white frosted tip, there's something I want you to try. This is perfect for winter. It's perfect for snow. This has more of a white mixture to it, and you pair that with a texture paste. And this will really make your poinsettias look like they have a very beautiful tip. So here's, th these are just some bonus tips that I'm adding that I had not pre-planned. Um, so I'm sorry this was not in any of the bundle kits that you would have ordered. I know that's sometimes frustrating, but hey, that's the joys of doing these recordings all of a sudden as a, a creative teacher. I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to show them this too. So it's a little bit of a bonus that I've had in my head that I'm like, I want to show this at the end. So using the texture paste, it's kind of a textured product. See how that kind of just looks like a, actually it looks like a whipped cream frosting. Don't eat it. Um, a disclaimer, it doesn't smell, I mean, it really doesn't have much of a smell, but um, it does look like frosting or whipped topping. So if you've got grandkids, um, you might not want them to lick that. So go ahead and have all of these tips. So half of this is just the frosting powder. And do you see how that is nice and kind of a, has that crusty, a white look? And then we're going to add the frosting powder over the top. And that will just go ahead and give you a very glittery textured tip. So you can do have so much fun with these. That's what I love about these poinsettias is it has a lot of real estate in those petals to enable you to really add some extra glitters and texture paints and glimmers and have some fun with it. So that's an extra bonus that you can definitely experiment with and have lots of fun with. So hopefully that inspires you um, with lots of creative tips and techniques. So again, um, this is just some beautiful tips and techniques that you can use for yourself, your family and friends as you go into the holiday season. I know many of us, we're gearing up for it. We're super excited and nothing brings in the ambience of the Christmas season like these altar projects, these beautiful stunning poinsettias. Before I go, I wanted to show you some more card samples in case you're like some of us that like to procrastinate. We haven't finished our Christmas cards yet. You've got time to do it with these simple, easy tips and techniques. So I've got a basket here. Do you want me to flip through that? These um, projects have been featured on our blog and in our gallery um, with instructions. So when you, um, so we'll take a look at these. Um, so we'll go ahead and just bring these down. And when you type in the name of like the Festive Poinsettia and go with the instructions, um, oops, you'll see instructions on how to do these as well. So lots of variations from simple to elegant. Here's another one added to the beautiful urn. Just love, love how that turned out. 
Um, so lots of beautiful ways to color this and add different like glitters and lacquers and textures and card sizes. So hopefully this inspires you to create and have just some fun with them. Um, no matter what type of crafter you are, whether you are that card maker or you love to do those altered art projects. Oh my gosh, isn't this just stunning? This is done on vellum and then with a beautiful die frame. If you are looking for a free die and you don't have this one yet, this came out in August. So, so pretty. It's a snowflake frame. Um, here's one done with a poinsettia on a foam flower, which is really pretty as well. Um, so lots of variations on how you can really um, utilize this. Here's a beautiful silver with a little touches of red. By now, you might have changed your mind a hundred times on how you want to make your poinsettias. These are stamped on a foam, glittered, and then with the aqua leaves, which is a super pretty combination. And then this is back to more of your traditional look. You can have that archway die in the center and add your beautiful cardinals and poinsettias so once again let's take a review of what you get in your basic kit if you don't have yours yet the basic kit has your um let's see here you get the small festa poinsettia stamp die and the shaping mold so that helps you to create your poinsettias for all the projects that you want to make for your christmas season uh, but what most people do is they get our large set that has everything in it with the stamps dies and the Lux cardstock. So make sure that you choose which one works best for you um, and you will save with those bundles. Plus, if you don't have the accessories, we have made an accessory bundle where you get the two colors of inks, the two packs of stamens, and also a pack, a six pack of the sponge daubers I use for coloring. Um, so you can check out those links if you haven't done that yet. And make sure you take advantage of that free die with a $50 purchase by entering code 1113202 and that expires on November 13th. So hopefully this inspires you to create your one of a kind Christmas cards, your altar projects, home decor projects. I can't wait to see what you create. You can pop over on our Facebook page at heartfeltcreations.us and you can see all the, uh, you can show us what you made and see many more examples on our website on what you can do with a festive poinsettia. Now, I mentioned this very briefly earlier, but if you love all things Heartfelt Creations, you love what you saw today, I highly recommend that you become an Insider member. What do you get when you're an Insider member? When you sign up to become an Insider member, you have instant access to a 20% savings. That's on top of the savings you get on these bundles, plus individual items, Say you just need a frosting powder or texture paste, you get free shipping on any order every single day, which is an amazing uh, value if you are a U.S. crafter. If you're an international crafting friend, you get a 20% discount on your products plus a 20% discount on your shipping fees. But what most crafters like is the additional educational piece, which is two-hour live crafting classes once a month plus a classroom vault of 40 different classes. They're all valued at $30 each. They're two hours in length. And you have access to all of what I just said uh, for $12.99 a month, which is basically the cost of two of your favorite beverages, depending on what you like to drink. Or you can also choose the yearly option where you get three months completely free. So you get to decide which way you want to go with that. Thank you so much to Scrapbook Expo for, uh, for making it possible to host this event today. Thank you for attending this workshop. Let us know what you loved about it. Let us know where your aha moments were. Um, we are so grateful that you joined us. Until next time, have an amazing rest of 2021. And I wish you, your friends and family, a great holiday season. Bye.